Once upon a time there was an old miller who had three sons. When the miller died, he left his sons a mill, a donkey and a cat. The eldest got the mill, the middle got the donkey, and the youngest had to take the cat. The older brothers laughed at him, but the cat promised that he would make his younger brother rich if he gave him a pair of boots and a bag. The owner was surprised, but fulfilled the cat's request. The cat immediately pulled on his boots on his hind legs, poured oats into the sack, threw it over his shoulders, and went hunting. In the forest, he opened the bag, threw it on the ground, and hid himself in the thickets. He didn't have to wait long. A curious hare galloped to the sack and climbed into it to feast on oats. And the cat was just waiting for that. He jumped out of the thicket, tightened the sack, lifted it on his shoulders, and went to the royal castle. The king of that country was a great lover of good food. The cat bowed deeply to him, handed the hare, and said that it was a gift from his master, the Marquis de Caraba. The king was pleasantly surprised by this surprise. The cat bowed like a real nobleman and hit the road. The next day he went hunting with the sack again. This time he managed to catch two fat partridges. The king was delighted to see another pleasant gift. For several weeks in a row, the cat continued to wear partridges and hares to the king. But he did not say anything about this to his hungry and emaciated owner. Once the cat saw a princess in the palace, she was very beautiful. The cat realized that she would be a wonderful wife for his master. And so the king wanted to finally meet the marquis. The cat replied that they could find him tomorrow for a walk where the mills were. And he himself ran at full speed to the mill. Seeing the owner, the cat said that tomorrow he will need to swim in the river, and then his life will change. The next morning, as soon as he got into the water, the cat grabbed his clothes and hid them in the bushes. At that moment the royal carriage appeared on the road. The cat jumped out onto the road and shouted at the top of his lungs, Save me! Help! The Marquis de Caraba is drowning! Hearing this, the king ordered to pull the Marquis out of the water. The miller's son got very frightened when two guards began to drag him out of the river where he was basking in warm water. The king ordered to bring him his silk attire. The miller's son initially refused, but he liked the gold embroidered clothes so much that he gladly put on the royal outfit. The king invited him to the carriage, where the beautiful princess was sitting. The miller's son was dumbfounded, but without further ado got into the carriage. A minute later, the carriage rolled on through the fields and meadows that belonged to the giant cannibal who lived in a huge castle. The cat wasted no time, and what was the spirit rushed ahead of the carriage towards the meadow, where the reapers were working in the sweat of their brow. He asked them to say that these fields belong to the Marquis de Caraba, otherwise the evil cannibal will eat them. Before the astonished reapers could reply, the king's carriage pulled up. And when the king asked whose meadows they were, they answered in a friendly chorus that these fields belong to the Marquis de Caraba. Meanwhile, the cat went straight to the man-eater's castle. With feline dexterity, he jumped over the stone wall and made his way into the castle. The cannibal was sitting at a large table laden with various dishes. Seeing the puss in boots, he was greatly surprised at such impudence. The cat began to tease the giant and said that he could not turn into a lion. Before the cat had time to utter these words, the cannibal turned into a huge lion with a shaggy mane. The cat's soul went into his boots from fear, but he overcame it and said that the cannibal could never turn into a mouse. The terrible lion disappeared, and a small mouse appeared in its place. And that was all the cat needed in the blink of an eye he caught up with the mouse, caught it and ate it. At this very time, the royal carriage drove into the castle courtyard. Opening the carriage doors, the cat bowed politely and said that he was glad to see everyone in the castle what? of the Marquis de Caraba. It is difficult to say who was more numb from amazement at these words, the king or the miller's son, who already did not understand anything at all. 
The cat took the guests to the table. At the end of the dinner, the king, having eaten to the fullest, said that the marquis was indeed a very worthy man, therefore he would gladly give his daughter to wife. The princess was happy young, handsome, and besides, she really liked the rich marquis. Soon they played a wedding. So the miller's son married a princess and became a prince. All of them lived happily ever after, especially the cat, who proudly paced the palace in high boots. In one small town there lived a toy maker, Geppetto. Hello! He made a living selling homemade wooden toys. He liked his work. The only thing the old master nice. regretted was that he had no children. One day, while walking in the woods, Geppetto saw an excellent log for new toys. He took the log with him and brought it to the workshop. <laughs> Immediately, without delay, the old man began to cut a toy out of him. But suddenly he heard a thin voice from the log. Geppetto thought what he imagined. He continued to carve the toy, and after a while he heard the voice again. Geppetto decided that he was simply getting too old and began to hear strange voices. Oh no! The old man continued to work. First, he made the doll's head. Then arms and legs appeared. Geppetto finished the doll and sat her down in a chair. And he decided to clean up after himself. And at that moment he heard the voice again. Geppetto froze and looked around. But there was no one in the room except a wooden doll. The old man continued his work. And suddenly, the doll jumped up from the chair. Geppetto was speechless. When he realized that his doll came what? to life, he decided to give her a name. And he named him Pinocchio. Geppetto and Pinocchio lived merrily together. It's time to send your son to school. <laughs> Geppetto lived poorly and had no money for school supplies for Pinocchio. He decided to sell his jacket and gave the money to the boy. Pinocchio took the money and happily hurried to school. Suddenly, he saw a crowd of people. To find out what was happening, the boy squeezed forward and saw in front of him a huge colored tent. It was a circus. The clown stood in front of the entrance and barked visitors. Pinocchio Hello. became very interested in what was inside. But the clown would not let him in, because the boy did not no. have a ticket. Pinocchio took money out of his pocket and gave it to the clown. Going inside the tent, the boy saw how funny dolls were playing a performance on the stage. At the same time, the owner of the circus noticed Pinocchio. He was very happy to see a living doll and decided to take Pinocchio into his performance. As soon as the show was over, the owner of the circus caught the boy and put him in a cage. Pinocchio was very upset that he did not obey his father and did not go to school. He burst into tears. And suddenly, a fairy appeared in front of him. She saw that Pinocchio greatly regretted his deed and decided to save him. The fairy cast a spell and Pinocchio was on the street with money in his hands. He headed to school again. On the way, Pinocchio met a blind cat and a cunning fox. When they found out that the boy had money, the cat and the fox decided to take it. They said that this money is not enough for school supplies and it needs to be increased. And for this they need to plant money in a magic field. A money tree should grow from the earth, from which a generous monetary harvest could be reaped. The naive Pinocchio believed the scammers and gave his money. When the boy was left alone and without money, the fairy appeared in front of him again. Pinocchio lied to the fairy and said he had already bought school supplies. As soon as he said this, his nose began to grow. The more Pinocchio lied, the longer his nose became. He was very scared and told the fairy the whole truth. At the same instant, the boy's nose shrank to normal size. The fairy warned that every time Pinocchio cheated, his nose would enlarge. After these words, the boy again found himself on his way to school with money in his hands. Suddenly, the owner of the circus blocked the road to Pinocchio. He was terribly angry that the boy was able to escape and wanted to put him back in the cage. But Pinocchio was not easy to catch. Without hesitation, he jumped into the water. Pinocchio was made of wood, so he didn't drown. 
and the current carried the boy forward. When he was already swimming to the shore, a giant fish swallowed him. At the same time, desperate to look for his son on land, old man Geppetto decided to start searching on the water. He borrowed a small boat from a fisherman friend and swam to look. Suddenly a violent storm began. The boat could not cope with the waves and crashed. The old man could not swim and therefore began to drown. And then, a huge fish that swallowed Pinocchio, swallowed Zeppetto. When he got inside, he immediately saw his son. Seeing his father, Pinocchio was very happy. He was very sorry that he had not obeyed and promised from that moment to always do as his father told him. Seeing that Pinocchio was truly sorry, the fairy decided to save them. She freed the boy and the old man from the belly of the fish and carried them to the shore. Pinocchio became a very intelligent and obedient boy. He went to school every day, and after studying he helped his father in the workshop. 